Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for basic AI number two using the behavior tree. I have created a quick little example here. Let's go ahead and run it and then we will discuss what we are seeing. I have a little AI opponent. He's on the other side of the map right now. And basically he set up if he can see me, he's going to try to find one of the valid exit points I placed on the map and get to it. Now if he doesn't see me, he's simply going to stand there and do nothing. Now I've only partially implemented this so we can cover what I've done so far and how to expand upon it. So let's get started. If we go ahead and pull up our behavior tree from the last video, you'll notice this is what we have. It's pretty simple. A service, a decorator, and a task. What we're doing on this one is we are starting with this. A few services, a decorator, and a few tasks. We're going to cover how they work. But as an overview, basically, we are finding the player and storing them in the blackboard. We are determining if we can see the player and setting a Boolean value. Then based on if we can see the player, we are finding a random exit point, moving to it, and waiting, and then waiting five seconds. Now the second branch on the right will soon be, if we can't see the player, we wait. That way it doesn't actually affect this one, and then we can abort back and forth as needed. So let's check out the services. Find player service is simple. This is a standard service. It's not one built in, but it's one you'll find once you create it, you're just simply going to reuse it. All we're doing is getting the player, sorry, all we're doing is getting the controller of the player, getting whatever pawn they control, and storing it as a blackboard value. Service can see player is a little more complicated, but it's pretty simple to understand. What we're doing is we are getting the AI controller. We are doing a line of sight to the player from the AI controller. So we're basically doing, can the AI see the player? Now there is no limitation on here. There's no limitation on the distance. There's no basic sanity check. This is a basic AI. This is just, can we see the player? Is there something visibly obstructing the AI from the player? And then we're setting the Boolean value return into another key which is right here, which is our can see player boolean. Now, our next one, our first branch in our sequence. Basically, it's a decorator that's very simple. Can we see the player and return true or false? And this is a condition check on our, ta our decorator, not our task. Basically, will this branch run if we can see the player? Right now it is set to yes. If we can see the player, we're going to run this branch. We're going to create another branch here shortly for when we can't see the player. Now, what do we do if we can see the player? Well, first thing we're going to do is find an exit. Find exit is pretty simple. What we're doing is we are only doing this once on the execute. We are getting the AI controller, casting it to our AI controller class, getting the pawn that we have controlled, casting that to the correct class for the pawn. So after all of that, basically we have our pawn. Now inside of our pawn, what I have done is I have created a simple array of exit points. Exit points are pretty simple. They are nothing. They are simply a regular actor that I've created and named exit point that I've placed throughout the level. You can see them, they are these little round white spheres, the default actor. That's it. It's just a simple actor I'm using in order to designate what an exit point is. So all we're doing when the character starts up is we're getting all of our exit points and storing it in an array that's unique to the character. Now there's a couple different ways of going about this, but my thought process was I'm creating one controller to try to control all of my AIs. I'm planning for the future. If I have more than one AI, I want it where one controller controls the different characters. And I thought maybe some of our AIs are less intelligent than others. So for example, this one may have access to all of our exit points. 
whereas I may have other positions that they can use for hiding or maybe I only want them to use some exit points or maybe I only want them to have access to half of the exit points because they're not intelligent. Basically I left the ability to define the valid exit points up to the character that way I could make each character unique. So that's why I stored them all inside the character. So what we're doing is getting those exit points and just doing a simple random in range and getting one of the exit points at random and storing that as an exit object. And then we're making sure we finish execute. That way it's success and we can move to the next step. Going back to our AI tree, what we're gonna do is end up getting a valid exit from here, and it's gonna store it as an exit actor object. That way we have a valid object to move to. Then we do a simple move to exit. Once we get there, we wait five seconds. Once this is done, we're going to run the other part of our sequence, which is wait another five seconds. Now what we're going to do, now that we've covered that and we've seen that in action, what we're going to do is expand upon that. So here's what we're going to do. What we need is, let's go with the selector. Let's move our weight underneath our selector. Let's remove this weight because we're gonna move it over here and our thought process is, here's our sequence. Can we see the player? Let's do this. Can we not see the player? Let's do this. And this is really simple. All we have to do is add the same decorator before, can we see the player? And inverse it. Now it's, can we not see the player? Let's make it appropriate. Can't see player. And now it's a little bit more informative in terms of what it does. So we can't see the player. If this is true, then we're gonna go and wait five seconds. The nice thing about this is if we set it up to a board, since this is running for every five, every half a second for seeing the player, we're either going to abort out as soon as we can see the player, or as soon as we can't see the player, we should be able to abort out and move over to the next part. Now since this is doing the move to, the can't see player probably won't happen in the middle, but let's see what happens. We're also gonna run into another issue here. Let me pull this up and move this over here. And hopefully you can already see an issue we're going to run into. First of all, it's always gonna execute that left side for the most part because we can always see the player. That's going to be an issue. And it also helps if you set the valid correct key. Remember I've mentioned before, when you set up a new decorator or a task, it defaults to your first value. Because I set this to player key instead of can see player, I have a val invalid check here. So let's go ahead and run this again. Now it should go to our exit point. There we go, can't see player is invalid. Therefore, it's immediately gonna run our left branch again. And you can notice now instead of waiting, it's gonna bounce between any random point. So that's good. Now the issue I was running, mentioning, let's go ahead and move this back up here for a second, is our player and our AI can always see each other. They don't actually have anything blocking. So let's set up a few blocking areas. Let's drag this over here, move this up a little bit make it into a taller wall and that should work for a basic blocking area there. Let's go ahead and go over here and let's make this kind of like a little area. Let's go here. We'll move this here. We'll rotate it. And we need some form of way to get in, but we'll set it up like something like that. So that way you have a little area to go in for the AI, but we are blocking on two ways. We're blocking it one way there. Let's delete this because we can just drag over and we will drag this over. So that way when the player starts, there's a wall blocking. Let's move this over here. Let's set this up on the other side to give us a little more variety. And let's move this over here. Rotate it 90 degrees, move it like such, duplicate on the other side, and there we go. We should have two blocking 
volumes on each side. Let's run this again and see what happens. So our AI should try to find a valid point. And on this case, it was that one, so it's not good. Now it's going to try to find another one. Now in this case, if we go to our blackboard, assuming I can figure out where it's at, here we go. Our player should be doing exactly what we are expecting. Because we can no longer see the player, this sequence is not going to run, which means it's going to go back to our root and it's going to sit there idling. Let's move this off. Whoops. God, God, I love doing this. Let's see if we can. There we go. And now we move it off screen. There we go. Okay, so. And the minute I can see the player, you're going to notice them try to move. He's going to try to find himself a hidden spot. It looks like on the other side of that wall. Once he gets on the other side of the wall, he immediately stops moving. Now, this is what I meant by this is, has the ability to abort. So as he's moving to his location, he can no longer see the player once he gets behind there, which means we're going to abort. Technically, we've never finished our move to. We might want to change this where we're not going to abort if we can stop seeing the player. That way we always move to the valid location. That's, again, personal preference. But right now, if I was to go around here, you're actually going to see it move to finish and then move to the next spot. And if you notice, it's not going to try to flee. It's going to get to the middle point. It's going to still be able to see us. So it's immediately going to find another point to get to and run to it. Now it looks like it's going to cry in that corner over there, and if we stay here, it should successfully make it in. We watch our behavior tree, it's going to fail. Boom, it goes up there. Let's change this to stopping it, and let's change this so it no longer aborts. We have changed our abort to none. Let's go ahead and play this, and whoops, let's let our AI go into its spot. Let's zoom back in. We can see it's moving. We can see that it can see the player. Now, if you notice, instead of going back up here, it successfully finished this branch, and it's now going to can't see the player, waiting five seconds and going back up to the root. So that is something to keep in mind. We're running the sequence. It's going to execute left to right, and it's going to continue as long as we get a success. An abort is going to count as a failure, so you need to keep that in mind. So because this aborts, Immediately before we finish moving, this never gets to go. Therefore, it's considered a failure and we never get to tell it to wait. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to immediately seek cover, we want our left one aborting. That way it immediately hits cover. Once the player, it can no longer see the player or the player can no longer see it, it'll go ahead and stop and it doesn't really nestle into its home point. If we go ahead and set it where it aborts, we saw it where it actually makes it all the way to the exit and then it nestles in. Maybe have it sit there, maybe have it recover its energy. Maybe do an animation where it looks around and looks for the player, whatever you want. Again, it's all up to how you want to set it up. But this is an example of changing just one little setting can actually change the entire way it works. Let's go ahead and stop this. And let me look at my list and see if there is anything else we can quickly cover in our behavior tree. Picked a valid exit. We saw the player and we flee to it. We stopped if we were close enough. One thing we could do, which might be a little bit of fun, is what if we had it where the AI... So right now, you can see it running for the exit point. It can see the player and it runs for the exit point. It makes it a little less realistic because it. how does it know that it can't see the player? Let's use the focus node, since I've already covered that in another video. Let's quickly add in a few little tasks for the focus nodes and have it stare at the player while it's running to cover. So, can we see the player? Well, let's go ahead and go up here to our sequence. Let's add a new service. This is an example of breaking everything down into your services, decorators, and tasks to easily change your AI on the fly and make kind of like a little AI library. So let's add a service. Focus on actor. We're going to go ahead and set this to focus on, I think this is the wrong service. Yeah, this is the wrong service. 
Let's try this again. This is also an example of making sure you name things properly. Service can see player, service example service, service focus on actor. Was it focus on actor? Oh, let's check out our tasks. Let's see. Tasks, task, clear focus, task, set focus. No, it was, here's the set focus task. Okay, this is what I want right here. And we're going to set focus on our player. We'll name this to focus on player. And what this should do is it should focus on our player. If we look at this, we are setting our focus to the value of the player key. Okay. And we're already setting our player key right here, so we should set focus right there. Okay. Then we're going to find our exit and move to our exit. Once we get over here and we can't see our player, let's go ahead and clear our focus. Let's rename this. I had a little bit of difficulty finding the right one earlier because I was trying to set the focus up here and I forgot that wasn't what I did. I set it up as a task because it made more sense. Okay, let's try this. So if you notice, the little red dot is looking at our player. Now at this point in time, the red dot should just be in the last place we looked at and it's not focusing on the player. The minute we come around the corner, it's going to see us and then it's going to flee, but it's going to focus on us the whole time. So as you notice, it's fleeing to its exit. It's running backwards basically. Let's hide here. You notice it's going to keep going and keep focusing on the player because that's where it last saw us. But now that it can't see us anymore, it's going to basically be looking in the last place it saw us. We come around the corner. Oh no, it sees us again. It's like, no, you can't stop me. We are chasing it again. As you notice, it's going to continue looking at us because it needs to make sure it's going to be out of view. We look again and now it's like, oh, that's the last place I saw you. I know you were there. We sneak over here. Boom, it sees us again. And it'll keep going. So there we go. I took two existing nodes that I created in another video. Focus on player and clear focus, and I set it up now we give it a little bit more life for when it's trying to flee. So that's going to cover this video. This video's intention was to show a little bit more of the basic AI. In the first video, we covered finding the player and getting to the player. Now we basically covered seeing the player and getting away from the player, finding an escape point. And we also added a little bit of you know, polish work maybe, a little bit of extra where we're now focusing on the player to give it a little more believability while we're fleeing. So, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.